All right, thanks guys. Welcome to the video. My name is Brock Page and I do sports picks for free right here on YouTube. I also sell my personal bets on brockpage.com. I have packages on that website starting at just $1.99. Coming off a nice winning day yesterday as well. Uh, first winning day since uh, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, it's been long overdue. We had that perfect 5-0 day on Cinco de Mayo. And I went and, you know, told everybody, told the world about it. And then uh, didn't record a winning day until <laughs> yesterday. So that's karma. That's the way it works out. Got to stay humble. But uh, anyway, guys, got ourselves a massive slate, a juicy slate of games here today. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We're going to go ahead and start with the Reds. Uh, taking on the Pirates, and that's going to be a 635 Eastern first pitch. Now, Pittsburgh is the $1.20 favorite at home, totals eight runs. We have Mitch Keller on the bump here for Pittsburgh, Tyler Maley on the mound here for Cincinnati. And uh, even though it's been a, a bit of a rough start here for Maley, strikeouts are still up. He's, uh, he's fanned 32 batters in just over 30 innings of work. So averaging a little bit over a strikeout an inning. And uh, as a team, following their dreadful start to the year, uh, the Reds are, uh, you know, they're winning a few ball games here. Uh, they won their last two straight. And they also got the W in five out of their last seven. Now, when it comes to head-to-head -to -head meetings between these two franchises, uh, Cincinnati's actually done a really good job offensively. They're averaging nearly six and a half runs a game in their last 10 meetings with Pittsburgh. And uh, speaking of the Pirates on the other side of things, uh, they haven't been all that great, you know, at the plate. They've been struggling offensively. They're averaging only 3.7 runs a game this year. And uh, no real surprise here. They're in the bottom 10 in homers per contest. So really struggling, hitting for power. Now, pitching-wise... Mitch Keller, I'll tell you what, he has not been good this year. Still waiting on that first win. He's 0-4 on the season, 6-11 ERA, and a 1.54 whip. So, uh, you know, Pittsburgh backers looking for uh, Keller to uh, turn things around here today, although uh, not looking too good for him. Now, total-wise, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, head-to-head -head meetings between these two squads, uh, eight and two to the over in their last 10. So plenty of overs to go around. Uh, meanwhile, Cincinnati, uh, just, you know, on their own, they are 22 and 10 to the over for the entire season. So I uh, wouldn't be, you know, all that surprised if this one got over the number. I'm going to lean toward the Reds plus a dollar in the over eight runs. All right, next matchup I have for you. It is going to be Brewers taking on the Marlins. And that's going to be a 6.40 Eastern start time. Now, Milwaukee's the $1.35 favorite on the road here. Total six and a half. Corbin Burns for Milwaukee. Pablo Lopez for Miami. Now, uh, Lopez has looked really good this season. He's 4-1 on the year with a 1.00 ERA. And, of course, no real surprise here. Lopez comes into today's game with a .89 whip. Uh, just simply can't hit the guy. Uh, and speaking of this Miami pitching staff, a lot of good things out of them this year uh, and in recent head-to-head -head meetings. They've held Milwaukee to just 3.8 runs a game in their last 10 matchups with each other. And of course, as far as this year's concern, uh, the Marlins are currently in the top 10 in fewest home hits allowed. So doing a great job at Lone Depot Park. Now, uh, Milwaukee on the other side of things, they just strike out way too much. And they've been doing that for the past couple of seasons. Uh, they're an, they're an analytics-based you know, team and they fan an awful lot. Um, they're actually in the bottom five in the majors right now in strikeouts at the plate. Now, the uh, Brewers also lost four out of their last five ball games. And they allowed 40 total runs in the process. So, you know, not only are they struggling at the plate, but uh, their pitching staff really having a hard time here. So Milwaukee looks to turn things around with Corbin Burns. Uh, you know, I like their, you know, I'm not going to say I like their chances to win, but Corbin Burns is really good. But uh, anyway, total uh, total wise here, uh, you know, Milwaukee, they're 7-3 to the over in their last 10 against the Fish. 
they're also 11 and 7 to the over when they travel. Meanwhile, Miami on the other side of things, 8 and 5 to the over at Lone Depot Park. Uh, I'm going to lean toward another dog here. I like the price point, and I think Miami should be able to get the job done. I'm going to lean toward the Marlins plus a buck 15 and the over six and a half. Hello. Hello. How was your uh, little walkthrough? It was good. Was it weird? Uh, a little, but it wasn't bad. Yeah. All right. Next matchup. It is going to be Houston taking on the Nationals. And that's going to be a 705 Eastern first pitch. Now, Houston is the $1.60 favorite on the road here. Totals eight runs. We got Frommer Valdez on the bump here for Houston. Josiah Gray for Washington. And uh, Gray getting banged up a little bit here. He comes into today's game with a 1.31 whip. And uh, as a team, Washington dropped six out of their last eight ball games. And they've also had a real tough time getting the W in the nation's capital uh, out of their 17 home games this year. They picked up the W only four times. They're four and 13 straight up at Nationals Park. Now, Houston on the other side of things, they're hotter than a pistol right now. They're currently on a 10 game winning streak and they allowed only one point runs. A, uh, let's try that again. They allowed only 1.1 runs a game during that stretch. So really getting some superb uh, pitching uh, during that span. Uh, and speaking of the pitching, uh, this Houston staff, they're doing a great job at keeping the ball inside the park. They're in the top three in fewest home runs allowed per game, and they're also in the top three in lowest uh, opponent's OPS as well. And of course, we got Frommer Valdez on the bump here today. A lot of good stuff out of him this year. Uh, he's got a 334 ERA coming into today's start. Now, no real surprise here. Total-wise, Houston's 9-1 to the under in their last 10, and of course, that's because uh, you just simply haven't been able to score against them. Now, uh, Houston also seeing plenty of unders when they travel this year. They're 14-5 and five to the under in their road games. Meanwhile, Washington, 13-4 and four to the under at Nationals Park. I'm going to lean toward Houston, minus 160 in the under eight runs. All right, next contest, more interleague, uh, interleague play. Uh, had trouble getting that one out. But anyway, it is going to be Mariners taking on the Mets, 7, 10 p.m. East. And that game is in Flushing, Queens. Uh, the Mets are minus 220, total seven runs. Max Scherzer on the bump here for New York. Marco Gonzalez on the other side for Seattle. Now, uh, Gonzalez having some uh, troubles here this year. Uh, just one and four on the season, 1.62 whip. And as a team, Seattle really struggling right now. Uh, losers of eight out of their last 10. And they gave up four more, uh, four runs or more eight times during that stretch I just mentioned. Now, when Seattle plays on the road, bad things happen there as well. They're just 5-11 and 11 straight up as the official away team. And they're also in the bottom 10 in road scoring. So plenty of problems for Seattle backers. Now, they're taking on a Mets team who looks really good right now. They're already 11 games above 500, and they're also in the top three in the bigs right now in team batting average. Of course, Pete Alonso, uh, he's always a threat uh, to hit that one out of the park. He's got eight homers on the, re uh, on the uh, year, 28 RBI, which is actually second in the majors in that runs batted in category. And of course, Starling Marte, 20 RBI, 17 runs scored. And of course, even if the bats don't, you know, come alive here today for the Mets, they've got Max Scherzer on the bump. He's going to keep you in any game he pitches. He's 4-1 and on the year with a 292 ERA and a .95 whip. And this guy's so good that, like, those aren't even great numbers for him, you know, that 292 ERA. Although in the grand scheme of things, uh, that is a very, very good ERA. And, of course, uh, an even better whip of just .95. And, of course, you know, when it comes to Scherzer, Tough to hit him. Strikes out a lot of uh, guys. Big strikeout guy. He's got 49 Ks on the season already and just 37 innings of work. Now, total-wise, four out of the Mets' last five games fell under the posted number. Meanwhile, Seattle 10-6 and six to the under when they travel. I'm going to lean toward the Mets minus one and a half and the under seven runs in that tight window. Got to lay the one and a half to get any type of value on New York. All right, next ball game, 
Baltimore versus Detroit, 7, 10 p.m. East. The Tigers are the $1.45 favorite. Totals eight runs. Eduardo Rodriguez for Detroit. Jordan Lyles for Baltimore. Now, Lyles does have a couple of wins on the year and uh, doing a pretty good job with strikeouts. He's got 26 Ks on the season. Uh, Baltimore has a team putting together, uh, putting together a couple of wins here. Uh, they got the W in six out of their last eight with victories against the likes of St. Louis, Kansas City, and Minnesota. They're taking on a Detroit team on the other side of things uh, who got just one win in their last 10 outings themselves, really struggling right now. And uh, when they play at Comerica Park, uh, bad things happen there as well. They got the W in just five out of 18 home games. Now, uh, Detroit, they're just 9-23 and straight up overall for the season, so they've yet to reach double-digit victories. And no real surprise here. They're dead last in the majors right now in scoring on average per game. These guys are uh, averaging less than 2.9 runs per contest. Now, uh, one more thing to add here about uh, the Tigers. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, he takes the bump here today. He's still in search of his first win. He's 0-2 on the season with a 450 ERA. So uh, Ed Rod struggling to get the job done here in the early going. Now, total-wise, uh, when it comes to head-to-head -head meetings between these two uh, organizations here, 8-2 uh, and two to the under in their last 10. So plenty of unders between these two squads. Now, Detroit's 22-10 and 10 to the under for the whole season themselves. And uh, ironically, Baltimore is 22 and 10 to the under for the whole year themselves. So plenty of unders to go around. I'm going to lean toward Baltimore plus a buck and a quarter in the under eight runs. All right, next matchup I have for you should be a good one. I'm talking about the Blue Jays taking on the Rays, 7, 10 p.m. Eastern start time. Now, Toronto's minus $1.30, total six and a half. Kevin Gaussman for the Blue Jays, Drew Rasmussen for Tampa Bay. Uh, Rasmussen, pretty good start to the year. He's 3-1 and one with a 2.89 ERA and a .96 whip. Now, uh, the Rays, 7-3 straight up in their last 10. They're uh, also doing a great job getting on base. They're currently in the top, excuse me, top 10 in the majors right now in home hits. And, of course, Manny Margot, he's batting 307 with 20 runs batted in on the year. And Wander Franco, 38 hits already on the season, 20 runs scored for him. Now they're taking on a Toronto squad on the other side of things who uh, haven't been playing uh, very good baseball. They're currently on a four-game skid, and they also dropped seven out of their last nine. Now offensively at the plate, uh, the Blue Jays have been held to three runs or less in six out of their last nine outings. And believe it or not, uh, as good as this lineup is, really is on paper, the Blue Jays are scoring only 3.9 runs a game for the entire season. So uh, run production is down for the Blue Jays. Now, total-wise, uh, nine out of these teams' last 10 head-to-head -head meetings did fall under the posted number. So if you're into historical trends, you certainly want to think about that one there. Toronto also 19-13 and 13 to the under for the entire season. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay 10-6 and six of the under at the trop this year. I'm going to lean toward the Rays, plus a buck, 10, and the under, six and a half. All right, next contest I have for you, it is going to be Padres taking on the Braves, 7.20 p.m. East. Atlanta minus $1.55 in this one, total seven runs. Max Fried on the bump here for Atlanta. You Darvish for San Diego. When it comes to the total in this one, the Padres are 60% to the over on the road this year. Meanwhile, Atlanta 12 and 6 to the over at Truist Park, and that's good for 67% in that particular category. Now, when it comes to selecting a winner in this one, this game's actually being featured as my extra daily bet on BrockPage.com, and that bet is only going to cost you just $2.99. I'm actually 2 0 my last two picks in that membership. And just remember, guys, if you do sign up for my extra daily bet here today, you're actually going to get access to that membership every single day all the way through the end of May. And as an added bonus, guys, you're going to get access to the Daily Best Play absolutely free as well. So you're actually going to get access to both of those memberships every single day all the way through the end of May. But as far as making a free pick is concerned, I'm actually going to lean toward the over seven runs in that ball game. 
All right, next matchup I have for you. It is going to be Red Sox taking on the Rangers, 805 Eastern first pitch. Texas is the dollar 20 favorite at home, totals eight and a half runs. Dane Dunning on the mound here for Texas. Nick Pavetta on the bump here for Boston. Now, real quick, guys, my wife's about to leave to go to work, so I'm just going to take a quick timeout. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you got to show him the shirt. Look at that. We did not plan that. <laughs> Don't look at the don't look at the jugs here, guys. I'm talking about this shirt. Great shirt. Thank you. And she's wearing that to work, man. We're representing today. It's a shame that Ashley and them all wear theirs out and stuff. I know. I know. Everywhere. It's a shame that out of the what three years I was selling merchandise, I only officially made four sales. Yes. I only sold four pieces of merchandise. Officially, yes. It's pathetic. Like nobody cares about my merch. Except I do. you guys. Except I if do. I'm giving it out for free. I care about it. I, I bet. Well, it's a free shirt. So, I wear it. Yep. All the time. Mm -hmm. No <laughs> holes. No holes in it yet either. So no. it's good. Good no quality holes. material. Got the back. Yep. Got the website on the, the back. On the back. <laughs> yep. yep. I love you. All right. Love you. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. So we were. What were we talking about? Uh, Boston and Texas uh, Rangers minus a buck twenty total eight and a half. Dane Dunning for the Rangers. Nick Pavetta for Boston. Now uh, strikeouts are up for Pavetta. Kind of a rocky start, you know, he did, you know, get into some trouble here in a couple of outings, but uh, strikeouts are up. He's got 29 Ks in uh, just over 26 innings of work, so a little bit over a strikeout an inning. And when it comes to head-to-head -head meetings between these two squads, uh, Boston's doing a nice job of uh, getting runners across the plate. They're averaging nearly six runs a game in their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings with the Rangers. Now, offensively, the Red Sox are in the top 10 in road scoring right now. And uh, conversely, they're also in the top five in road hits. Rafael Devers, he's batting 313 this year with five homers and 19 runs scored. Meanwhile, Xander Bogarts, he's batting 345 with 18 runs scored as well. Those guys doing a great job uh, getting on base and um, getting home. All right, now Texas on the other side of things, really struggling at Globe Life Field. They've gotten the W in only six out of 16 home games, and they currently rank in the bottom five in the majors right now in team batting average at the plate. Now, uh, offensively, uh, the Rangers, they're currently in the bottom five in OPS at the plate as well. And when it comes to the number in this one, three out of the Rangers' last five home games did get over the posted total. Meanwhile, Boston, 3 and one of the over in their last four ball games as the away team. I'm going to lean toward Boston plus a dollar in the over eight and a half. Tell you what, normally we're pretty chalky, but we got ourselves a lot of dogs we're leaning toward today. So anyway, next ball game, it is going to be Yankees taking on the White Sox, 8, 10 p.m. Eastern start time. Now, New York's minus $1.70, total seven and a half. Garrett Cole for the Yankees. Vinny Velasquez for Chicago. Now, uh, Vince has just two wins on the year. I'm sorry. Uh, Vince does have two wins on the year. It's not just two wins. Uh, he does have two wins on the year in a 397 ERA. So even though I was kind of banging on him a little bit at the um, you know early part of the season, starting to th see things uh, turn around a little bit for Vince. And, you know, for Chicago as a team, uh, they've looked pretty good as of late. They're 7-2 straight up in their last nine. And uh, they scored three runs or more in all nine of those ball games. So this was a lineup who struggled in the first month, but uh, they are getting the job done uh, with regard to run production over the past couple of weeks or so. Now, Timmy Anderson, 333 batting average, 54 total bases. Uh, Anderson also scored 16 runs already. Uh, Anderson, that's a guy we've pretty much been talking about for the last couple of seasons anytime we break down uh, a White Sox game. Now, the Yankees on the other side of things, they actually uh, struggle a little bit to score on the road, and they're also amongst the worst in the American League in road hits. So uh, even though the Yankees are great, um, I don't particularly like this price point when they travel. Now, total-wise, the Yankees are 8-5 and five to the under on the road this year. Chicago 10-6 and six to the under at guaranteed rate field. I'm going to lean toward the White Sox plus one and a half, keeping this one close and the under seven and a half runs. All right, next ball game. It is going to be Guardians taking on the Twins, 8-10 p.m. East. 
Minnesota's minus 165, totals eight runs. Uh, Sonny Gray for the Twins, Aaron Savali for the Guardians. Now, uh, strikeouts are uh, up a little bit here this year for Savali. He's got 22 strikeouts in 20 innings of work. So even though uh, he had a couple of rough outings, uh, still doing a nice job fanning uh, his opponents. Now, Cleveland as a team, they've gotten the W in seven out of their last 10 ball games. And when it comes to head-to-head -to -head meetings, they've actually held Minnesota to just 3.6 runs a game in their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings. Uh, Cleveland offensively, they've done a nice job hitting the baseball this year as well. They're currently 7-3 straight up in their last... I'm sorry. <laughs> I already said 7-3 straight up in their last 10. Uh, they're actually in the top three in the majors right now in team batting average. And they're scoring pretty much five runs a game. Now, uh, most of that is thanks to Jose Rim uh, Ramirez. He's hit seven home runs, and he actually leads the league in RBI right now. Meanwhile, Owen Miller, he's batting 333 with double-digit doubles on the year, so extra base hits, certainly no problem for Miller. Now, Minnesota on the other side of things, uh, kind of cold right now. Three-game losing streak, bottom 10 in scoring. Uh, they're actually averaging less than 3.9 runs a game this year, and they've struggled with strikeouts at the plate, especially when they're at home. They're actually in the bottom 10 in the majors right now uh, in home strikeouts at the dish. Now, total-wise, Cleveland 7-3 to the over in their last 10 ball games, 60% to the over for the entire season. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Cleveland. Another dog plus one and a half in the over eight runs. All right, next ball game. It is going to be San Francisco taking on St. Louis, 8-15 Eastern start time. Now, the Giants are minus a buck and a quarter, total seven and a half. Logan Webb for the Giants, Jordan Hicks for St. Louis. Now, uh, Hicks is doing a nice job striking batters out. Uh, 18 Ks and just over 16 innings of work. He also has a 1.20 whip, so pretty respectable in that uh, whip department. And uh, speaking of uh, the pitching of St. Louis, uh, they're actually in the top five in the majors right now in fewest runs allowed per game. Now, offensively, on the other side of things, uh, they've done a real nice job hitting the baseball. They're in the top 10 in team batting average. Of course, Nolan Arenado, he's hitting 316 with seven home runs and 26 RBI. Now, they're taking on Logan Webb on the other side of things, who actually comes into this ball game with a 1.39 whip, uh, kind of uncharacteristic for the San Francisco pitching staff. And uh, speaking of the Giants, uh, they're actually in the bottom 10 right now in a to uh, an opponent's team batting average. So uh, not doing a great job right now. Uh, with regard to letting runners on base. Now, total-wise, San Fran's 8-5 and five to the under on the road this year. Meanwhile, the Cards saw three out of their last four at Bush Stadium stay under the line themselves. Another underdog here, guys. Another plus-money play. I'm going to lean towards St. Louis, plus 105, and the under 7.5. All right, next contest. It is going to be Kansas City taking on Colorado 8.40 Eastern start time in the Mile High City. Now, Colorado's minus 135 at home, totals 10 runs. Kyle Freeland for the Rockies, Zach Granke for Kansas City. Now, uh, Granke off to a little bit of a slow start here this year. Still looking for his first win. He's officially 0-2 on the year. But I'll tell you what, strikeouts, has really, uh, strikeouts have really been down here for Granke. Uh, he's not blowing anybody away with his stuff. He has just 10 strikeouts in 33 and two-thirds innings of work this year. Uh, that's got to be a career low for Granke. Uh, pretty bad with regard to strikeouts. And uh, really shouldn't be much of a uh, surprise here because this Kansas City pitching staff, they really don't strike out anybody. Maybe, that is, uh, maybe that's just a problem of their analytics, their data, their coaching. Because as a team, you know, especially a guy like Granke, strikeouts should be up. But uh, these guys as a team, they're in the bottom three right now in strikeouts per nine. Now, offensively, on the other side of things, they're not doing much at the plate either. They're averaging less than 3.3 runs a game. And they're also in the bottom three in the majors in team batting average. And of course, they're going up against Kyle Freeland here, who does come into today's ball game with a 394 ERA. Um, pretty good ERA considering that half of his starts are going to be at Coors Field 
uh, in that light air. Uh, also, Freeland, 26 strikeouts on the season. Now, offensively, uh, Colorado does have some guys who can hit the baseball. C.J. Uh, Crone, nine homers on the year already, 24 RBI. Meanwhile, Jose Iglesias, we haven't talked about him much. He's batting 319 along with 11 runs scored. And of course, uh, offensively, Colorado's leading the majors right now in team batting average. These guys have no problem getting on base. Now, three out of Colorado's last four ball games in Denver uh, got over the posted number. They're also 60% to the over in their last 10 at any location. Meanwhile, three out of Kansas City's last four interleague contests got over the line as well. I'm going to lead toward Colorado, minus 135 in the over 10 runs. <clears throat> Next matchup here, it is going to be Angels taking on the Athletics, 9.40 p.m. Eastern start time. The LA Angels are minus 145, total seven and a half runs. Chase Silseth making his debut here for Los Angeles. And of course, Dalton Jeffries on the other side for Oakland. And Jeffries has really struggled this season, not showing a whole lot of promise. Uh, one and five record, 5.22 ERA. Uh, he's certainly going to want to, you know, turn things around here uh, if he wants to stay up here in the bigs. Now, as a team, Oakland really not playing well at home, and of course, who would when you're getting three to four thousand fans a game? But uh, Oakland winners of just four out of fourteen at the Coliseum, and when it comes to covering the run line, they have not, you know, covered the number at home either. They're just 21 percent against the run line in their home games. Now, offensively, the A's are scoring less than 3.6 runs a game this year, and they're actually dead last in the majors right now in OPS at the plate. Now, the Angels on the other side of things, completely different story. They're leading the majors in OPS at the plate. Of course, most of that is thanks to Mike Trout, who's batting 337, along with nine home runs and 25 runs scored. And of course, Taylor Ward and Shohei Otani, they've combined for 13 homers between the two of them themselves. Now, uh, eight out of these teams' last 10 head-to-head -head meetings did fall under the post number. Uh, so if you're into historical trends, plenty of unders to go around. Meanwhile, the A's, they are 80% to the under in their last 10 themselves. Uh, as far as this season's concerned, I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Angels, minus 145, and the under, 7.5 runs. All right, next ball game: Cubs, Diamondbacks, 9:40 p.m. East. Arizona's minus a buck and a quarter in this one. Totals eight and a half. Zach Davies for Arizona. Drew Smiley for Chicago. Now, when it comes to the total in this one, uh, these teams went 60% to the under in their last 10 meetings with each other. Meanwhile, Arizona, lots of unders at Chase Field this year. They're 14 and four to the under in front of their home fans. And that's good for 78% in that particular category. Now, when it comes to selecting a winner in this one, this game's actually being featured as my Major League Baseball tier package bet on BrockPage.com. I'm currently 3-1 in my last four bets in that particular package. I'm also hitting at 73% my last 15 bets in that very same package as well. Uh, once again, guys, if you do sign up for my MLB tier package, you're going to get access to that package every single day all the way through the end of May. And you're also going to get full access to all the cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. So incredible value there. But as far as uh, making a free pick is concerned with this ball game here, I'm going to lean toward the under eight and a half in that game. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup for the video. Uh, it is going to be... Phillies taking on the Dodgers, 10-10 p.m. East. Now, the Dodgers are the $2.25 favorite. Totals eight runs. Clayton Kershaw for Los Angeles. Kyle Gibson for Philadelphia. And uh, even though Gibson has looked real sharp uh, thus far in the year, uh, the Phillies have struggled away from home. Uh, winners of just six out of 14 road games this year. And when it comes to head-to-head -to -head meetings, uh, they're averaging just six, I'm sorry, they're averaging, <laughs> come on now, they're averaging just 3.7 runs a game in their last 10 contests with the Dodgers, and that includes uh, last night's big offensive performance. 
Uh, and speaking of offense for Philadelphia, even though they scored a bunch of runs yesterday, uh, they still struggle with making contact. They're actually in the bottom 10 right now in strikeouts at the plate. And that's certainly bad news for them because they're taking on Clayton Kershaw here today, who's 4-0 on this season, 180 ERA, .73 whip. Uh, Kershaw struck out 32 batters in just 30 innings pitched. And as a team, the Dodgers, they're 10 games above 500 right now, and they're 10-3 and straight up in front of their home fans. Now, offensively, Freddie Freeman, what an acquisition for these guys. Uh, still performing as, at a uh, high level. Dude's like my age. I mean, I, I can't even get off the couch without pulling a muscle. And uh, this guy's playing at a very high level. Uh, 313 batting average for Freddie. 20 runs scored. 14 extra base hits as well for the old man. And, of course, Mookie Betts, when you're talking about, you know, offense with the, uh, with the Dodgers, he scored 26 times already. And he also has 16 free passes. So Betts doing a great job getting on base and scoring. Now, total-wise, seven out of these teams' last 10 head-to-head -head meetings did fall under the posted number. Dodgers are also 63% to the under for the entire season themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Dodgers minus one and a half and the under eight runs in the tight window. And with that, guys, that is going to do... Uh, Got to do a couple things first. I texted my buddy to see if he wanted to play some golf. He's got to do a couple things first. Okay, so he hasn't confirmed. So I'm just going to wait around all way, all, all day doing nothing and just wait for you to cancel on me. <laughs> right? Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. Uh, but most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, happy Friday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.